Speaking of inverting. Nope. <laughs> Have you ever wondered what would happen if you inverted living things to dead things? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. That's what I was uh, going to say. No. Welcome to this week's episode of Hypothetically Speaking. Uh, I am Tyler Malter. With me is... <clears throat> John Reed. And... Brains! Zombie Sean. <laughs> Brains! <laughs> Zombie Sean Murphy. Brains! <laughs> um, so, this week's episode, we are talking about if we were in the zombie apocalypse, what is our bug out plan? And we're going to try to poke holes in each other's bug out plans and make them not work because we don't want each other to survive. Oh, I didn't so, get that part. Yeah, so oh. that's the important thing here is we're going to start pitching ideas like, I'm going to do this, and you're just like, okay, well, have you accounted for running out of water or blah, 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 or mutant, like, tank zombies that are able to run really fast and rip your head off, and, and there's witches and Left for Dead rules. Um, oh, my God. Those aren't real. No. It's, okay. <laughs> it's like George Romero... Night of the Living Dead. Are they shambling zombies? Sure, yeah. So fragile and slow and really if you don't get swarmed, you'll be okay. Um, probably your worst enemy is like being out outside all of the time without the cushions of a good, nice air-conditioned home and other people. That's what I would assume is re in reality what Walking Dead is minus the like sneak attack zombies that always pop up and kill people. So, so the rules let's go over some more rules yep <clears throat> so if somebody were to die do they become a zombie yes so we're in a world where whatever it is is persistent it was it's not because in like the the original night of the living dead it was a comet and it was really technically only when the comet was there they, they sort of retconned that in the later ones but mm -hmm. it was a momentary like rising of the dead right yeah so, okay yeah, it's not that and it's not like um do we have warning or is it like you wake up and there's already zombies? Um, I Let's just say every major city simultaneously has a small outbreak of a couple people. So throughout the first day is going to be the largest um, you know, gathering of zombified people. Sure, okay. So And then over time it diminishes. Um, if you get bit like a couple hours and you're a zombie, not instant zombie or anything like that um and we're in our, and we're starting home. in wichita so let's assume you wake up to a phone call from somebody that you know or love and they're saying hey there are zombies this isn't a joke turn on the news you watch the news and there are real zombies walking around attacking people and everyone's freaking out and running for the hills so but you are within like the first 10 minutes of of the reporting Mm -hmm. Like you, you are right there watching the first zombie on TV. So you, along with everyone else, all simultaneously have the same problem. Okay. And well, that's where we begin. Ah, uh, that's tough. So, who would like to go first? Um, you know, I'll go first this time. I don't okay. usually go first, mm -hmm. so uh, I'll go first. Um, <clears throat> okay. Well, this is tough because I have to think that there are other people out there that are resourceful like myself. Right. So it's I I'm not gonna obviously go for the 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 low hanging fruit. I'm not gonna pick the shopping mall. I'm not gonna pick the Walmart. What I'm actually gonna go for, and this is really important uh, historically for the the area we're in, mm. is I'm going to go for abandoned missile silo. Okay. And what I mean by that is that there was a period of time in our history where uh, the government was able to pour exuberant amounts of money into building these missile silos all throughout. Um, the the Midwest mm -hmm. and they're huge they're massive they're like seven stories deep they just got like a like a lock cover on them well um, they were never used they were never really intended to be used it was like a um, like a laundering of money so to speak mm -hmm. so there was this large push at one point for the government to sell them off and when they did that they retrofit them for living quarters so they went it through and they turned them into like places you could live and they have this is absolutely true and so they have lots of different floors in them, and they've got like, like um, all the amenities that you would need, and uh, you you would live in this missile silo, like this deep silo under the underground, and they sold quite a few of them, um, but not all of them, and there's still many of them that are out there, so that's where I think I'm gonna hole up, and I'm thinking I'm gonna like 
I'm gonna give people opportunity to come because it's big enough space mm -hmm. that like I want some other people <clears> to come. <throat> Not to mention the fact that you know I I would try to pick you know I have, I have a pretty diverse um, friend group as far as their skill sets. So like people like my buddy Ryan who's very scientific and and has uh, you know a, a medical background and things like that. Like that mm -hmm. would be an obvious choice and um, probably my close friends. I I can't think of any right off the top of my head. Um, but <laughs> expect you to. <laughs> Wouldn't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, I think we spend that day um, splitting our resources up. Now, again, I don't want to get into it too much, but I have, I have the capability of finding these where these locations are based off of some of the things I do in my day to day life. It's kind of how I know they exist. Sure. Um, so. I, we would triangulate where we're going to be. I would probably get out there early enough to make sure that we find a vacant one mm -hmm. and then have everybody meet, give the coordinates, and we all hole up inside the, the silo. How do you deal with traffic? Because I, I feel that traffic is one of the uh, like the most deadly things sure. in, in any type of, of like crazy, um, I don't know, emergency scenario. And I was listening to a podcast the other day, Ding, and they uh, they were talking about these wildfires in Canada that happened like two or three years ago. And one of the guys, they interviewed a guy for a news article on crack.com, and the guy was talking about how the scariest thing was <clears throat> up until the last minute, they were saying, don't worry about it, you'll be fine, it's not going to come, like, it's not going to head your way. And then they were like, you have to leave now. You have three minutes to evacuate. And the first thing everyone does is put all of their loved ones and favorite belongings in a car. And they pull out and they're stuck in traffic, sitting on their own street with all of their neighbors also in cars, all trying to leave at the same time. And you're, you just have fires, like, all around you while you're just trying to drive away. So same concept. And that's something that, like, even in Walking Dead and most zombie movies you have like long lines of cars that are all abandoned on the side of the road because people decided to just walk or they ran into a bunch of zombies that started attacking people or whatever you know well so I, those are, that's definitely a good point i think first of all we're blessed to be in the situation in wichita um where the traffic i feel like would be omnidirectional there's not like one real way to go mm -hmm. um so you have that working for your benefit it's not like the coast right you know Second thing, population density is going to be a lot smaller. So as you have multiple directions to go, I feel like the fear of, a, of a, the traffic jams is, I mean, you can get anywhere in this town in 10 minutes and then you're out. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's a problem. And, and thirdly, uh, it's alarming during these sort of crises and situations like this, uh, catastrophic events, uh, how many people don't leave. And how many people refuse to leave where they, they are, where they live. I mean, sure. look at situations like Katrina, and there were people that refused to leave their house. Right. So I, I feel like while the panic is real, uh, if we were in Chicago, um, that's a real problem. I think in Wichita, um, it would not. I think you could find a route out of town. Okay. Um, so you, you go out of town, you go to a missile <clears throat> silo, mm -hmm. and you just... Hold up. I mean, at that point, like I said, I feel like the people that I know are very resourceful. One one individual that I would bring, uh, he's in his post war life. He's so focuses on survival, so he's got generators and water filtration devices and backup of all of that stuff. And I think the minute I sell him on, I don't think it'd be hard to sell him on the silo. Right. Um, it's you're talking about an enclosure that's flush mounted. And uh, air filtration system built into it, so there's really there's really low chance of a zombie getting in for sure. Right. Um, they can't really break anything down. They're gonna the, there's the the weight on top of it is not a concern either. You couldn't pack enough people. Sure. So and I, I don't I don't know what they're set up like, and I don't know if you do or not. Mm -hmm. Could you open the top and they just fall in? Um, yeah. To, well, to the bottom of the. It's not, it's, just, it's less, I mean. No, that, I mean like the actual missile silo no, itself. So that's I imagine it's like, it's like welded all shut. And, is it? Okay. Uh -huh. Well, that's unfortunate. Because you could just have a trap door. It just <laughs> dump them in? Yeah. But that, that's where I'm at. Oh, that doesn't matter. You don't use the bottom two floors. Oh, then they just dump it. Yeah, they just fall but to the bottom. that'd be noisy. Yeah. We're talking about a zombie apocalypse and you're complaining about noise and smell. <laughs> well, I would be if I had lived in a missile silo where right. it's nice and quiet. I guess, yeah. You have, you have like, the perfect amenities. Sure. 
Man, honestly, that's probably that's probably better than mine. <laughs> Sean, have you uh, have you figured out? Oh yeah, this is a conversation I've had with military buddies mm-hmm. just a lot, and uh, <clears throat> so I'm gonna assume that I'm not concerned with taking care of family and loved ones and stuff like that uh, because I have there's like uh, you know a, a large number of steps you'd have to take to protect those people outside the people that you would use for survival. So. Um, I'm going to skip that part entirely and just assume that they're A-OK. Uh, so the first That's thing... big assumption. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing I'd have to do is I would have to assemble a really small circle of people who uh, provided something to what I would consider the tribe, right? So, um, you know, being a Marine myself, I have a diverse set of skills tailored to survival in all kinds of situations. I would have to find... Uh, so people who were really, really good at like navigation, like way better than me, who could, you know, read the stars and the sky and could understand like weather patterns and stuff like that and like help me get across the land because I'm not taking a vehicle. I'm far more mobile on my feet than I am in a vehicle where I'm stuck to driving where the road takes me. Yeah. Um, sure, it's faster, but you're also assuming that you're the only one on the road or at the very least that traffic is light, that you can get to uh, point A to point B relatively fast. So <clears throat> I'm on foot. Um, I have a small group of people, probably four or five guys total in this little tribe, including myself. Um, you know, there's going to be the hunter-gatherer kind of people because, you know, food, you're going to need food. And zombies don't necessarily feed off wildlife and most of the shows that I've seen, so I'm going to assume that they don't. Uh, So I have to hunt. I have to have people who are really, really, really skilled at hunting uh, while I coordinate this team and and get us going. Um, We're leaving the city almost immediately and making our way, not necessarily to like the missile silo uh, kind of scenario, because what happens is you... You will get you find yourself the missile silo kind of situation or like the community situation will grow and it continues to grow when people will start to recognize it as a safe haven and then you run into like all of the typical political issues that you see in the shows where like now you have a hierarchy of you know leadership but then you have the dictator and then what if he's the bash your heads in with a spiked baseball bat kind of leader and then you know so you run into all these problems um, and so I find that keeping it in smaller group like the fire team level is a lot more beneficial but they also have to be people you can trust someone who's not going to like stab you in the back and take your goods and run for the hills you know while you're in your sleep or something um baby grenades (laughs) baby grenades so in the event that you are swarmed you're going to need something you're going to need something to keep the zombies away oh no so we're headed to this to the planned parenthood facility (laughs) <laughs> we're taking as many of them as we can. Oh my and that's going to be our like our getaway bait, right? <laughs> I know it's dark. <laughs> it's dark, but it's your life or the dead baby, right? Oh, so well, at least you picked dead ones. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm You're not throwing a like live a baby. full of aborted fetuses. The problem is the alive baby's rotten. They won't be good. They won't be good like the bait. Dead babies, you mean. Yeah, the dead babies will rot <laughs> and they won't they won't be good bait. So wouldn't it be better to keep them alive? For a certain well, amount of yeah. time. I mean, I'm assuming baby. that the zombie will eat anything human flesh related at this oh, point. So, God. so that's that's the first. That's one of the first things you got to do. Oh. You have to find. You have to have an out for every dangerous situation you could find yourself in. Mm-hmm. You're gonna run out of ammo, right? And it, you know, shotguns. You, to the reload time it takes for a shotgun. If, they, they're, if they're close range. Uh, we so, need to go back to this baby thing for a second because <laughs> I feel like the babies would probably work against the humans too because. Like, if you were throwing dead babies at somebody, I probably wouldn't come after you. Like, I'd be like, that guy's nuts. Yeah. He's the baby guy. Like, that's baby. You could name yourselves, yeah, the like, dead babies. Dead or like... babies. <laughs> like, I mean, look, survival is dark, man. You got to do what you got to do. I'm just thinking that it would terrify me to be, like, the, I think the babies are going to help unilaterally. You, you should also get a bunch of uh, baby dolls and, like, take all their eyes out and stuff and then leave them places like oh shit the dead babies were here we can't mess around around. any anyone in this like in this gas station we don't know what's in there but the dead babies could be in there we gotta go yeah they'll throw babies at us i'm telling you it's the perfect it's the perfect getaway for swarms of zombies because what are they gonna do once like 
you know, meat lands yeah, in front of them. They just, right. like, they, they fight each other over it. And so now you have at least a way to, you know, you have your out to escape. No, no, um, no, 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 I'm not done yet. I, I, you wanted to jump back. But, so, <laughs> like, you call, them, so <laughs> you call them baby grenade, but do you do you make them into, a, like, put a grenade in them? Are they you Molotov could. cocktails where, like, you fill them with alcohol and then you have, like, a, a handkerchief hanging out of it and you light the handkerchief on fire and throw it. So See, here's the thing. If, like you, if you stuff then... a grenade or, or wrap dynamite or a grenade around the baby and it explodes, now you've... It's like it's like a thin amount of peanut butter on a piece of bread, right? It's yeah. just, like, blood meat all over the zombie and they're not going to be satisfied, but they're going to fight over getting the biggest chunk off of the whole creature. Sure. Okay. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. but wouldn't they... Wouldn't the, grenade or the stick of dynamite or whatever actually kill zombies too the zombies. well then i would just throw the grenade and i'd have two types of ammunition versus one okay <laughs> touche okay. all right all right We're fair good. fair all right. so uh, i'll allow you to continue <laughs> some of the things that people are going to naturally do is they're going to go to places where they can find weapons accessible Babies. weapons like well they're going to go to like gander mountain and try to pick up rifles and stuff <laughs> I'm going to be the only one at Planned Parenthood packing my bag full of fetuses, right? I thought about this. And so did my team, and they're all on par. So, uh, they're like, yeah, this sounds good. We're all going to be baby throwers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, team baby catapult. Do, do you get like a junior varsity baseball guy on your Well, I'm going to look for a potato launcher because I'm going to be, I'm going to want to launch oh, these things. T shirt gun. Yeah, no, exactly. Potato launcher has got too, way too much velocity. <laughs> You're going to tear them babies up. Yeah. Um,. <laughs> I think you get a t-shirt gun. Okay. So, uh, so I'm going to want weapons, uh, aside from my baby grenades, <laughs> that don't rely on ammo, like right. mach machetes, <laughs> swords, things like that, uh, bludgeoning weapons. So um, that's probably the first thing I'm going to go after. Uh, and then I'm going to you know, look for the obvious, the water, shelter, food, until I can get myself into a location. Probably in the mountains. I'm going to head straight for Colorado and probably uh, camp out there in the mountains. And sure. that's going to be my... AO my area of operation until this whole thing dies down. So like like Colorado mountains. Yeah, or even further. You know, I could even go east. I mean, they're the closest ones. Mm -hmm. So um, that's yeah. the thing about these these zombie invasions or uh, whatever you want to call it is I really don't buy that we would not overcome it. Oh yeah, no, I totally agree. I don't think you're talking about. More than 60 days, 30 days. I don't even think it would take that long. I think within a day or two, I think military mobilization is so fast now that any kind of outbreak or situation can be resolved rather quickly. Like, for instance, when, uh, like, let's take natural disasters, for example. In 2011, I had just got out of the military, and Joplin, Missouri, was hit by that tornado that, like, took half the city off the map. Mm -hmm. Immediately, I was contacted to go down there. And by the time I got down there, which was the following day, like... National Guard and Marines from Kansas City had already shown up and were right. set up and were moving and operating and I was just point more where, where do I go you right. know so it was extremely fast so if like word of an outbreak gets out and it's a legitimate outbreak it's going to happen really really quickly but here's yeah. the thing though is that if anyone dies they come back right so that, well, yeah from but that I mean point forward yeah so I mean obviously the living. Are you know there, there's gonna there's gonna be a um, a funneling of people. It's not gonna be like mass evacuations. There's definitely gonna they're gonna try to control the situation. Like you're gonna everyone's gonna funnel this way that way. Like you've seen um, I Am Legend. They had the gates and like all the people were going all across the bridge into the boats that were uh, fleeing the city. It's gonna be a situation like that um, because mass evacuation is just too chaotic and the military likes to be in in as much control of the situation as possible. Sure. Um, he means he means like every time forever, there's, a, there's a car accident and you go to check on a guy. Oh, you're talking about alive, like forever. Oh, well, then cremation dead. becomes the standard. Right, but in an incident where like someone someone flips a car at 2 a.m. and is found at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. and they're a zombie and a person goes up to check on him. Hey, man, you're over. Oh, you bit me. And then oh, well, see, well, then we're just creating out. jobs for America. So now we establish a police force. <laughs> Strictly okay. like in twenty four seven patrol. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's their job is so they're gonna report to hospitals to like be ready. Yeah. You know, when people the die, IPI. you have the right security. Yeah. Okay, so they're dead. All right, let's get the body of like an hour cremated. Mm -hmm. Um family can mourn later. You know What about your babies? What about my babies? Are they not zombies? Well they're gonna be eaten. Oh, that is such a good point. 
You would have baby zombies. You're fucked. Not babies. I just, I just poked well, a hole in your zombie. <laughs> well, now okay, you have to okay. Keep them alive. It's not about fresh so meat anymore. Let's assume there's a maturation process the body uh, has to undergo before it can become a zombie. No, no, let's not let's assume that. Is it? Hold on. So as soon as it comes out the womb and it just meets Mother Nature and dies, it's a zombie. Yes. Even if it dies inside, it's okay. So the then we're so doctors are going to recognize that and they're going to find a way to incubate the fetus so that it doesn't die immediately. It's but it's not you bacterial. They it's would, not they would, if a baby comes out and it dies, it's they would just, just kill it. I'm just yeah, saying, I mean, you, I mean, re kill it. There's going to be a fireplace in every hospital at that point. Right. But sure, but your zombie baby grenades, your baby grenades don't work. Are, are out are, are now up. you have a back full of zombie babies. Yeah. Well, okay. You have to either keep them alive or you can't have those zombie baby grenades. You're going to go to Wesley and take all the babies. I'll use the placenta. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm back on point. <laughs> I guess that works. <laughs> like you, you have like a slingshot. You're like yeah, I've got like the like a piece of the umbilical cord. I'm just like <laughs> swinging it around my head and let it launch. Okay. He's still going to Planned Parenthood to just pick up parts. This is why we need to invest well, in Planned no, Parenthood. No, that's a valid point. If the baby's dead, dead, and it's mm-hmm. dismembered, all mm-hmm. you just need to dismember your babies. Yeah. yeah. So you go and you pick up these zombie babies cut their heads off they're not zombie babies anymore now they're just <laughs> dead dead babies <laughs> in parts and you take those baby parts and those you could babies. you could you know but they'd be zombies zombies don't eat zombies you could get even darker and like <laughs> <laughs> no you can't blend, it. you could blend it into like a smoothie uh, and then create like little smoothie capsules sure. they're Pellets. just the, yeah they're like, well, a, like paintballs yeah, yeah they're just the right size that it attracts the zombies to fight over whatever it is but it's like uh-huh. dude no that's portion really you know because you can like you could just like peg down a tree with paintballs that are made out of baby corpses and they just go for ham on and, a tree yeah exactly and, and yeah they'll they'll all run after the tree and you know you got a bunch of you could Bells yeah you could dangle like tree. bits of it like from the tree so they're just like <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you for it okay um so every newborn i look at i look at its potential to be a weapon <laughs> in the zombie it's apocalypse like the buffalo you use every part of <laughs> yeah. it yeah yeah um, all right so so that's where you're, you're just going to the mountains and you're yeah, yeah, sunset. until the whole thing's over, yeah. That's probably the best, but get as high off the ground go, as you can. Go to the Winchester to this whole thing blows <laughs> over. Wait till it all just blows over. Okay. Have a pint. Um, it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's bad. <laughs> no, it's, the baby thing is bad. The plan is a pretty good plan. Um, I'm right there with you in that I, I, um, I wake up, I get, you know, I call up all of my friends, whoever I'm wanting to survive with me, um, really, it goes down a list of people with guns. So, like, I call one of my friends who, yeah, you're on the list. Right? You got on the list like a couple weeks ago. It's great. I have a potato um, gun full of. It's the baby, baby, it's the baby <laughs> fetus thing. I don't know why you're on the list. It's totally sad. Wild card. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I have a I have a friend named Chris. He was in the Marines. He is a gun collector, and he has, like, 85 guns. Mm-hmm. Like, he is one of the reasons I think we should start having stricter things on guns. Because <laughs> he has too many fucking guns. Um, that's a joke. I actually like the number of guns he has because he's my zombie apocalypse guy. So I call up, like, Chris, and I call up all my friends who have guns. If you have a gun, you can join me. And we all go um, caravan style through, like, we just take a side road. We don't go on the highways. Take a side road because all of the roads in Wichita, almost all of the major ones, just go north and they keep going north for miles and miles and miles. So we just take one of those side roads and we just drive and to the point where we can go around, it, even if the road is full, we can go around through just like bushes upon bushes of wheat or whatever, bushels of wheat, and just drive. So we drive north and we go to uh, the Flint Hills in Kansas, which is a very rolling hills area of the state, park on top of a hill, uh, have all of the cars like Triceratops style, make a circle ring. Circle the wagons. Yeah, circle the wagons. You put the fire in the middle of the wagons and it's on top of a hill, so you have visual to everywhere. Everyone who's on the outside of the cars can stand on the roof of the cars, and that's, that's our protective circle. We can see everyone, everything coming up the sides of the hill and um from there it's just hunker down until 
either everything gets fixed after a couple weeks, just hunting on farmland for animals like cows and stuff that are out in the pasture and you just drive a little bit further and pick up, you know, one or two and kill them and eat them. Um, or we, uh, if, if, you know, the government doesn't fix everything and we can't come back to society, then we drive south following the Mississippi River, go to the Mississippi, probably get on the river with all of our weapons, build some sort of raft, take the river down to the Gulf, find a boat and then we go port hopping for all eternity because uh if you're you know 50 yards off of the coast nothing can mess with you yeah that's probably the coming. the best terrain to be on is to be out in deep waters where mm -hmm. nothing can obviously zombies can't swim right. where nothing can get to you at that point and all you have to do is come back for brief moments to collect yep. goods so and we just turn into vikings and we yeah. just go port to port <clears throat> And we run in and we go no further than a quarter mile from the port and we rampage and pillage and we take whatever we need back to the boat and then back out to sea for weeks on end, you know. Um, and that's, that's really my, that's my secure plan to just do that. So really all of everything up until then is just to survive long enough to make it to the Gulf of Mexico. So I just need friends with guns who have some lighters and some firewood and like we're golden. But um, realistically, everyone just gets a baseball bat from their house and all the guns that they have and let's go hang out in the fields for a couple weeks. Sounds delightful. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> it is good. It's One thing good. I realized uh, halfway through coming up with this plan, um, I don't have any paper grenades, so There's no paper grenades. <laughs> have to get paper grenades. <laughs> that's so horrible. Um, God, that's horrible. Yeah. So, which which plan do you guys think is the one that would that would actually make it? Well, you can poke holes in all of them. You can't poke holes in mine. You can't. No, it's foolproof. I think if we take my baby grenades, <clears throat> the <clears throat> boat plan. And the Sean's, Sean's resources. So like, we could probably make it. We we <laughs> see the thing is I didn't ever think about these missile silos until mm -hmm. Sean told me about them. So my plan has since changed from go and find a hilltop to hang out in to go and find a missile silo, and then wait until like ninety percent of the population is dead, or they're like super crazy murderers and they're just like roving bandits out in the street. Yeah, and the, then make our way to the missile the silo. The thing I don't like about the missile silo personally is that there's people who take advantages of uh, chaotic situations like this. Like when, uh, like for instance, when that tornado hit, there's people just looting all over the place. Like your neighbor, the guy, like your best friend who's always at your barbecue is going through your stuff trying to steal from you. Uh, and there's, you know, there's people that prey on the weak all the time. So in a situation like this, you're gonna have people who like, who honey dick you into getting into that silo and then you find out they're a sociopath, and they just murder people. But we built the group, and they're like, well, yeah. But I you're mean, you're open if you're in a silo, you're and you said you're open to letting people oh, in. No, you no, have no. to be. I was open to building like my my group before we left. Well, then you, yeah. So then so, so then if you're a tight knit group and and there's yeah. nobody, it's it's just the fifteen of you, and nobody else can come in. That's right. Then now you are competing against other small communities who have the same idea in mind where we're going to survive over you we want the silo sure. and then you and then now you're you're hunkered into this situation like like if you're in a silo there's only one way out yeah you know and so they just block the all the, all they have to down. all they have to do is bulge you in you know yeah. and so now you'll never get out they're like we'll come back to this place in like six months when everyone's dead and or well, something that was like why that. i was depending but, on the idea that it wouldn't take that long then you yeah. have an entire silo filled with zombies because you've killed everyone in the silo. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Now you have roaming, you just ruined the entire silo. But there's enough boats out there, Slid enough the yachts silo. and cruise liners, yeah. you know what I mean? Well, I wonder, everyone gets one. <laughs> sure. Well, I wonder if you uh, if you treat all, all of our plans as a beginning, middle, and end. And we've used your idea from the beginning phase, John, of, of how you build your team and how you, you know, um, uh, Baby get out of the town and then... We build our, our rendezvous point, which is just temporary, which mm -hmm. is the silo, and sure. we establish ourselves there for a brief period of time, and then we finalize with Tyler's plan of the end of, Making of it to the coast. GTFO and getting and, a yacht, getting and a yacht cruise liner way out. Yeah. 
See, another thing that is really curious to me is, would it be America? Like, is it a chemical warfare thing that causes us to be zombies? Could we go to England or uh, Africa or something like that, even South America potentially, and be far enough away that... Well, it doesn't matter where you go because chemicals and the result of the chemical can be reverse engineered. And so whoever you use it on with a bright enough mind can recreate it and use it back on you. Well, and, and if you're talking about George Romero, and I, that was worldwide it was global and right. it was just it was atmospheric based off of a yeah. comet heading through our atmosphere so like i prefer that because then we don't have to overcomplicate it sure it's just a global epidemic it's everywhere if you die you come back cool the end yeah and if let's and if in that event i wouldn't want to be in a place like south africa because once humanity like civilization starts to topple nature takes back over yeah. and then now you're competing against lions and tigers and bears and oh, all my. that yeah exactly mm. And so I would want to go to a place that had probably the, the least fierce animal or predator to me. Yeah. Really? Just a lot of sheep. <laughs> yeah. Sheep, sheep and, like and goats. Scary yeah. Mass just snakes. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It's no. one or the other. New Zealand's all right. It's, it's, like the, it's like the other side of the coin for Australia. No, it's Australia light, which is still pretty fucking scary. No, no, they're super good. I don't think look so. Look it up. Look it up. I'm not going to look it up. I listened to a podcast one time, Total Tangent that um, they talked about where New Zealand was and there were four people on the show and one of them knew definitively where it was. The rest of them thought that it was part of um, part of like England. Like it was, they knew it was like an Greenland island. and Iceland and but all yeah, that. But yeah, they thought yeah. it was like off the coast of the UK or yeah. there was some part I don't of know where New Zealand is. You know how many people don't know where North and South Korea are on the map, can't point it out, or at least like the Asia countries, they can't tell you like yeah. which well, yeah, ones no, they like, are. On. Like the North North one is above the equator. Yeah, like I was talking to my girlfriend Before the other that. day and she had no idea that it was attached to China. Really? That they were that close together. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I mean, because well, I have a friend. Those are dead during a zombie invasion. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> like a combined total of 3.5 billion people in two solid countries between India and China. Yeah, just take, Wy take Wyoming and fill it with a billion people. <laughs> like, yeah, we're, it's we're over. Well. It's over. So, All right, well, I think that together we can all survive the zombie apocalypse, but I wasn't planning on calling John. Just <laughs> separate the screen. Well, I'm scribbled in. The baby thing the is, makes it a tough sell for everyone else. <laughs> I don't know that I could be like, no, he's good. He's good at Guys, trust me, I know the baby thing is weird, but believe me, he's got what it takes. Well, it would have caught me off guard, and I wouldn't have known about the baby thing. So you would have shown up <laughs> with a bag full of dead babies. And I wouldn't know. So I'd be like, hmm, yeah, like I don't know that I can I can grasp this one. We might need to rethink it. And I wouldn't have the ability to spin and turn around and be like, so he's got the babies. <laughs> I, I knew He's that was He's already coming. here, guys. We can't turn him away now. <laughs> no, because you know what he did to these babies. And we wouldn't even know that you collected them. Like, I wouldn't really be able to identify a newborn or... Like, I don't even want sure. to do this. I'm just saying, I wouldn't know that you didn't kill the babies. You wouldn't have to know. You could just... Oh, man, that's, that's, that's very your, valid. Your first move could have been to murder a bunch of babies, and I don't know why. I went to the first preschool I could think of, and I just started chopping, and like, <laughs> here I, I am. I feel like it would be a tough sell. You know, I had a conversation um, about this with a friend of mine, and he's, like, totally on board with throwing, like, his newborn at the time. He's like, hey, look, man, it's only the strong survive. <laughs> Survival of the fittest, yeah. and this baby's, like, ten years too young. Yeah. I don't, you wouldn't want to raise a baby in this world. It was a collection of Marines in Iraq around, you know, the desert. Sure. Just I like Who came up with this idea. Like, it was foolproof. Like, wow, just take, like human meat and just launch it the freshest human meat you get your hands on i like to think that um the, the situation's gonna occur but be in incredibly isolated it'd be like veal like one off, zombie you know? and yeah. he's gonna throw his baby and right. it's gonna resolve itself like 10 minutes later yeah and then he'll be known as the guy who threw his baby to the one zombie that ever existed it'll be like the end of that one movie yeah where the guy shoots everybody in the car gets out of the car and there's the military right and there and fix out. the problem right after so, that's like one of my favorite endings of it is. any it's movie one of the best endings I'm okay ever. with people I don't want to say the name of it I'm okay really with people good. criticizing me for it because when they do they'll be like the zombie will already be knee deep eating yeah. them while they're yeah. like getting onto me Those for throwing the, the babies <laughs> yeah. it's totally true yeah.
You're like, you should have seen the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> all this bag full of dead babies. Yeah, all right. Well, I I'll atone for my sins when it's over with. Yeah. You know, I'm going to take a long shower. Yeah, I'm going to shower with Sean. So. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> it's just weird. All right, well, uh, that is this episode of Hypothetically Speaking. Right. Uh, John, where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, at Pensive Fellow. John? At Chuck Bonsai one And I can be found at TJMalt421. So we will see you next time. Bye.